Hey guys, so today I'm doing another tag video. Are we fucking surprised? Is anyone surprised that Jesse's doing a tag video? Yeah? No? Didn't think so. <laughs> today I'm actually super excited for this one because it is the Brandon Sanderson book tag that was created by Chrissy Luis from I'm a butcher this. I'm telling you right now, I'm a butcher this. Dois. Divyaski in space. I'll leave her channel below. She is one of the co-hosts of the Storm Along 2020 and this is a tag to go along with it and I am participating in the Storm Along 2020 and it's been so much fun. So let's get into this Brandon Sanderson tag. So yeah, let's get into this Brandon Sanderson tag. The first question is, Brandon wrote many early novels while working as a night clerk at the Provo Hotel. What book kept you reading late into the night? A lot actually, because late night is when I read most of my books. But recently is the fifth season. I would pick it up at night before bed to just like read a chapter or two and like couldn't stop myself. I had to know more and I just had to keep reading. So I read this pretty fast and it's a pretty dense sci-fi fantasy book. But y'all, it kept me up all night. Just like I had to know more. I had to know what was next. I had to know what was next. So this is definitely one that has uh, recently kept me up all night. Number two. Brandon's complex magic systems set his fantasy apart. What subject do you love to read about in all its complexity? This can be taken multiple ways. So when it comes to like learning and nonfiction, stuff like that, um, law, which might sound really boring to a lot of people. I have a master's degree in legal studies, so I found it fascinating, obviously. Um, the criminal side of the justice system has always fascinated me. I also find the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act very, very fascinating. Again, this is probably just a me thing. Um, I did my master's thesis on it and the need for reformation because, fun fact, the Criminal Fraud and Abuse Act of 1984, which still to this day has not been changed and mandates the laws surrounding the internet, when it was passed in Congress, they played the movie War Games on the floor of Congress. And that is how they decided that they needed this law. A fictional movie with Matthew Broderick. Wrap your head around that. But if we're talking what I like to see in fiction, and read about in all its complexities, that's actually completely different and that's gonna be motherhood. Because I have been on this journey to find amazing motherhood representation in sci-fi fantasy specifically. Because I feel like it's lacking. I feel like we don't see enough like badass moms in all their complexity. And when we do see a mom in like sci-fi or fantasy, it's like, the old character that's like not really there and like all they are is a mother and I don't like that because we're more than just more than children like I like to see the complexities of relationships of mothers within sci-fi and fantasy so that was a really long rambly answer to that question so let's get into the third one <laughs> and that is Brandon gets his book ideas from watching storytellers fail to execute a concept well. He figures out how to do it better. What two books handle the same concept in strikingly different ways in which did you prefer? Women's War and Sword of Kaijin. Super different, right? Super different like Asian military fantasy and like more traditional European medieval fantasy. So super different but they both handle themes of motherhood, of women being repressed in society, of their only value being what they can bring to a man and what they can do as far as like birthing children and like women aren't allowed to use magic, women aren't allowed to be warriors. 
and both of our main characters kind of like fight back against the patriarchy eventually and I mean I cannot tell you which one I liked more as opposed to like how they handled that though they were handled completely different but I love how both was handled because I love both these books like this one obviously is like my one of my favorite books of all time so I'm gonna go with this one but read Women's War by Jenna Glass because not enough people do <laughs> like I want more people to read this book because it's so so good and underhyped and more people need to read both of these actually in childhood Brandon was recommended several books where the dogs die as a result he became a reluctant reader Please share a formative, good, or bad childhood reading experience. I've told this story before, but it was in my how to get to know the fantasy reader book tag, and uh, it was an older video, so I don't know if anybody saw it. When it came out when I was a kid, I enjoyed the Harry Potter books. I was probably in like fourth grade, third grade, something along those lines. I was young. Uh, my mom bought me all the books. I devoured them well you know the ones that were out which was like two or three and I went to a very strict Southern Baptist private school now I never took my books to school with me and I didn't really talk about it at school because there were like literal flyers posted up around the school about how bad it was how satanic the series was, how it will make you burn in hell to read it, and all these other like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs crazy things that like they're telling to a bunch of small impressionable children. Well, I guess I talked to the wrong friend about the book and a teacher found out and I was hauled up into the principal's office and legitimately interrogated like I'm in like fourth grade y'all I'm in tears this teacher is telling me I am gonna burn in hell and they're just questioning me without my mother there mind you they that she hadn't gotten there yet asking me like weird stuff about casting spells on other students if I was like doing all these crazy crazy things and I'm just like scared and crying and just terrified of this lady because I was in like fourth grade I was young I was a fucking baby uh, yeah my mom finally came up there and let me tell you mama didn't take no shit and she kind of went off. For one, she wasn't happy that they like started basically interrogating me until before she got there. And then she was mad that they talked to me about it anyway because she's like, it's a book. There's magic in the book. Because like they were okay with like Lord of the Rings, but they weren't okay with Harry Potter. And my mom was like, what? What's the difference? Tell me the difference. They're like, well, there's real spells in the Harry Potter books. But I was like, no, there's fucking not. Like it's, it's no. No. And then nothing was ever brought up about it again. But like they threatened to expel me. They were like, you're not going to be able to go here. Da, 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 da. You know, and that terrified me as a kid. Uh, but it didn't stop me from reading the rest of the books. It actually had the opposite effect on me and made me want to read more. It made me want to defy them more because... After I calmed down and got a little bit older even, like I realized how cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs they were. And that experience kind of put me off religion as a whole for a while. Like we ain't getting into religion, but like it kind of put me off of all of it for a while. Just because of not just that, but like other things that happened at that same school. And I did eventually end up leaving when I got a little older. But they were cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. They told me I was going to burn in hell because I was reading Harry Potter books. Didn't stop me. Again, you're in all the long, long ramblies today. All right. The next question is, Brandon and several friends host the Writing Excuses podcast. They frequently invite guests. Please tell us a collaborative fiction project that you and what you thought of it. Well, I can't. 
because I cannot think of a collaborative fiction project that I've actually read. But I recently picked up The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, and I'm really excited to read it. And this is a collaborative fiction project, and yeah. I can't tell you what I think of it because I haven't read it, but I've heard real good things about it. Brandon's first book, White Sand Prime, was rewritten and eventually converted into a graphic novel called White Sand. What book would you like to see in a different format? I got two. I want to see a Netflix original or Amazon original show for the fifth season because I feel like I want to see this. I want to see it's shot. I want to see this in visual form. Like, I just think it would be fantastic. I haven't read the rest of the series yet, but like, I think this would just translate so well to a visual format like TV. But it has to be like Netflix or Amazon so it can be dark and gritty and it can like really stick true to the source material and not be like super edited or compressed or made more family friendly because there's some dark shit in this book. But yeah, that. Or I think it would be so much fun to see a Kings of the Wild graphic novel. How fun would that be? I think it would also make a really fun like musical. <gasps> like a Broadway musical for Kings of the Wild with a bunch of like classic rock-esque music. <gasps> I would watch that shit. I would watch that shit all day, y'all. Yes. Brandon writes very quickly. What other prolific authors would you recommend? We're talking prolific. We're going way, way back. We're going with some classics. Because although I don't talk about classics a lot on my channel, I love them. And I used to read classics all the time, especially when I was younger. So two of my favorites are Charles Dickens and I really love A Tale of Two Cities. Call me weird. I loved this and I've read it quite a few times. <laughs> like when we had to like read it in high school for English class, I had already read it because I was a weird kid. And I think it has like one of the best opening sentences, like the most iconic quote at the very beginning, right? That first line. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. Everybody knows that it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, but like this opening sentence is a whole paragraph. Like that's a hella run on sentence, but it works so well. And I love it. I really like Charles Dickens. The other one that I really, really love and I think uh, is a pretty great prolific author is Jack London. This is Seawolf by Jack London, which is actually one of my favorite Jack London books. And it's really, really short. And I think I'm gonna reread it soon. This is the same copy I had as a small child. As you can tell, is, is a mess. A very small print as well. But it's about this guy who shipwrecks, he's like on a, like a pleasure cruise, and it shipwrecks and he is picked up by whalers. And he's given safe passage, but he has to work on the boat, on the whaling ship. And it is so, so good. And I read this when I was probably way too young to be reading this because I just fell in love with Jack London's works. This, Call of the Wild, White Fang. I have um, his biography written by Irving Stone that is actually autographed by the author. And it has like extra short stories of his. And I've just always really, really loved Jack London's writing. So yeah, pick up some classics, guys. The next question is, what book or series gets you really excited about the source material? The Poppy War by R.F. Wan. It's loosely based on the Sino-Japanese War. A lot of the events that take place in this book are loosely based on that Sino-Japanese War. And specifically, um, that chapter. It's chapter 21, yeah. Golan Nice, it is based on the rape of Neijing, which is a real event that happened during that time. And because of reading this book, I researched the origins of that incident and the actual history behind it. And it's not something that we're taught in history class here in America. 
and I would have never really known much about it if I wouldn't have read this fantasy book and then gotten this wild hair to be like, oh, I heard that it's based on, you know, real life events. Let's look it up. And then I wanted to puke everywhere because, you know, real life is worse than fantasy. And yeah, this got me really interested in it. And I'm glad it did, even though it's heartbreaking and terrible. Brandon loves to show multiple sides to every issue and to contrast character values. Please share a book that handles controversy well. Women's War by Jenna Glass. It handles some really deep topics, some real controversial topics really, really well. Like, you know, women's rights to their own body and sexual assault and pregnancy. And it just so much is handled in this book and it's handled really, really well. It's kind of jarring to see some of the scenes but I just think it does such a good job showing the female perspective and also showing the male perspective from two different areas. Like the men that want to support women in their quest for equality and the men that want to keep them down. All right, the last question. Brandon is a writing teacher and unlike some writing teachers, he posts his lectures online for free. What free resource are you grateful for? It says free literature resource, but I'm not a writer, really. So we're just going with free resource. Um, and this is super weird, but what, if you are a blogger, Neil Patel, he has his own website and he's here on YouTube and he has just, he's amazing. He is like the SEO guy and SEO is something that has really, really helped me grow my coffee mom website and turn it into an actual business as opposed to just like a hobby writing a mom blog. Um, he also has a free keyword research tool, which is like so, so great. So uh, Neil Patel, I guess, in his website is my best online free resource right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and had fun and found some good book recommendations. If you do this, let me know because I would love to watch it because it's just such a fun tag and I love me some Brando Sando. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. My name is Jessie and I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I will see you next time.